Let the shenanigans begin. Long live the shenanigans. Hello and welcome to the topic of this video. As always, let's talk some shenanigans. I like video games, you like video games, well, most of us like video games, but um, anyways, uh, well, video games, they've been around since uh, basically around the 70s, and even a little bit before then, and video games are one of the really biggest parts of the entertainment industry, if honestly, really not the biggest. I know movies are out there, and you know, you know, obviously everyone loves movies, but nothing has really hit the, um, you know, the entertainment industry, and and technology as much as video games, in a manner of speaking. It's practically a video game console in almost everybody's home, especially here in America. I mean, heck, I mean. Phones have video games nowadays. It's honestly just incredibly crazy Just like how much video games and video game consoles and whatnot have really hit you know the just the normal everyday home and In that regard, I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about well my top 10 personal favorite video game consoles there are many out there and I understand that I'm probably not going to hit a lot of the popular ones that, um, well, well, I'm pretty much going to hit a lot of the popular ones, but I'm probably not going to get your favorite console on here, and if I don't, well, I'm sorry, I've either never played it, or I just genuinely just don't care about it, or I've played it, and I'm just like, eh, you know, whatever, but I am very interested. If you do have a favorite uh, video game console, or company, or whatever, you know, just leave it in the comment section below and I'll be sure to take a look at it. Now the way I'm going to be ranking these video game consoles, it's by a lot of different means. One of them is basically how much that they impacted the uh, entertainment industry or video game industry. Uh, the other one is basically if whether or not they have a very good, um, you know, library of video games. The other is going to be, any manner of speaking, um, you know, the techie side of the consoles. I'm not the most technologically savvy uh, person when it comes to video game consoles, but I do know at least a little bit about, um, about the stuff to a certain degree. And then last but not least, it's going to be, you know, a little bit on personal preference. I mean, some of these video game consoles, they might not necessarily be, when I'm ranking them, they might not necessarily be the best video game console when it comes to the market, graphics, or anything like that, but um, when it comes to nostalgia, it might win over on some aspects. And I hope you kind of understand that, but I am going to list off all the very important reasons. Like I said, gaming library, specs, how much it actually impacted the uh, you know, video gaming industry. Well, that's basically it. So anyways, these are my top 10 video game consoles. The Atari 2600. Now, I honestly really love this console for a multitude of reasons. One, this was really the first major video game console to hit homes. This is really what got the craze of video games started in general. It doesn't necessarily have one of the best library of like video games and stuff like that, but one of the reasons why I love playing the Atari is just for how simple and you know easy it is to go ahead and pick up and play. I actually have an original Atari 2600, and a lot of the games on there, although sometimes it might be a little bit buggy, or maybe a little bit hard to play depending on the cartridge you buy or the game you buy, a lot of them can be a lot of fun to play. And especially if you just want to, you know, get like a little quick itch out on playing like some video games or whatever, it's a lot of, honestly, fun to go ahead and just pick up an Atari. Now, obviously, the reason why it's really low here on the list is for a multitude of reasons. One, as much as I love it and I think it's a really great piece of uh, video gaming history for like 
like making video games popular in the first place. Um, it did almost destroy the video gaming market, <laughs> and um, on top of that, uh, like I said, the games are very, very simple. It's nothing to like what we have today, and I love a lot of the Atari games for how simple they are, but at the same time they are still, well, relatively very simple. The Sega Dreamcast. Now, the Sega Dreamcast, I truly believe, is an underrated console. It had a lot of great stuff that it brought towards the table when it came to video gaming. It's kind of sad that this really was Sega's last console, because it was a good console. It even had a decent library of video games to a certain degree. I mean, it had Sonic Adventures. It had Sonic Adventures. <laughs> I'm kidding. There are quite a few other really fun video games on there. Two of the most nostalgic games I have for the Z uh, for the Sega Dreamcast, uh, other than Sonic Adventures, uh, was uh, Star Wars Jedi Power Battles, and um, ah oh, dang it, I, I, I I'm absolutely actually blanking. Zombie Revenge. That's actually a game I had a lot of fun with on the Sega Dreamcast. It is definitely a fun console and it definitely had a lot of really cool and interesting things about it in general, but uh, through some like weird business choices and whatnot, it eventually just kind of died. And then of course, like I said, there was also the PlayStation 2 coming around and whatnot, and that really basically nailed the, you know, uh, the coffin basically, for the Sega Dreamcast. Like I said, still a really fun console, but eh, some problems. NES, also known as the Nintendo Entertainment System. This is a great console. It is honestly just such an incredible console for how it was able to, on, uh, to honestly uh, revitalize the entertainment industry after the absolute failure of Atari almost completely destroying everything. <laughs> it's really great just how just like the business practices and everything that Nintendo attempted to do to try and get video games back into the household. It had such an incredible library. I mean, it had Mario, The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Duck Hunt, honestly just so many more. And it also has so many like little hidden gems all over um, uh, the NES. And uh, I understand that a lot of people don't like the games by LJN, but honestly, I have had a lot of fun with some of the LGN video games. I love Friday the 13th, I love A Nightmare on Elm Street, Jaws, and just so many more. And then on top of that, there's also a whole bunch of other really incredible NES games that I already own in my collection. And it truly is incredible just what the NES was able to do. Now, the only reason why I don't really have it any higher is not because it's a bad console, it's actually a very legitimately good console. It's it's mainly just when it came to a lot of the video games that you could play on it, a lot of them were, in any manner of speaking, kind of hard. And it's not that I uh, don't like a good challenge, I love a good challenge when it comes to a lot of video games, but unfortunately sometimes you had to be really tough as nails to uh, beat a lot of them. Castlevania comes to mind, I love the Castlevania series. and. Um, you know, eventually, you know, I got really good at, like, at, at attempting to actually beat those games. But, they are still sometimes incredibly tough due to some of the programming and stuff like that. Um, and on top of that, I also didn't really grow up with, Nintendo, with the NES. Um, I mean, I did play it from time to time. I did have a, uh, cousin who, um, owned an NES and sometimes I played it, but... I never really fully got into the NES compared to some of the other consoles down the list. The PlayStation 4. This is a pretty dang good console. Now, I understand, you know, with the whole, well, Microsoft Sony war and fandom and all that, it's it's a little hard when it comes to like picking, you know, these kinds of, you know, like the PlayStation over the Xbox in particular. The reason why I love the PlayStation 4, a lot of it has to do with its gaming library. It has some fantastic exclusive video games. It's very hard for me to go ahead and say all of its gaming library because, I mean, most of its gaming library is also on the Xbox One 
or PC, so it's I can't really be like, oh, yeah, these games are incredible, you know, on the uh, PlayStation 4, but it does have some really good exclusive um, video games. Uh, obviously, the two that come to my mind uh, at the moment are, of course, uh, Marvel Spider-Man and God of War. Those are some incredible video games that really, at least with God of War, really revolutionized the aspect of storytelling when it came to a series, and it really matured when it came to uh, like the character of Kratos and his story, and really what was once a hardcore, incredibly violent video gaming series eventually showed us a character who um, event, you know, eventually tried to shy away from that. Now, granted, that's more of a thing towards the story, more uh, like the game, rather than the, the system itself. But there are some really cool stuff uh, with the uh, PlayStation 4 itself, such as the fact that you can stream directly from the PlayStation 4, the fact that the graphics do look pretty dang incredible on it, especially if you have a PlayStation 4 Pro. I understand that some of these elements are probably a little bit better on the Xbox One, but... I personally have never played an Xbox One, and I probably never will. <laughs> the Xbox. Yes, the original Xbox. I actually have a lot of really great nostalgia uh, surrounding the original Xbox. Uh, and whether or not it's with my uh, family, or whether or not it's when I finally got an Xbox. One of the reasons I love the Xbox is it actually did so a few staples that we actually have in gaming today, such as exclusive online memberships, downloadable content, quite a few other really uh, neat little things that was introduced with the Xbox. Now on top of that, it had some incredible exclusives. I mean, of course, there was the Halo series, which is, although not necessarily my favorite gaming series. I do truly admire everything that Halo was able to do for the first person shooter in genre. And then on top of that, you also had Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Now I know that's not an exclusive because it is also on the PC, but it was only on the Xbox and the PC. So, you know, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Knights of the Old Republic 2, um, they were some incredibly really great games. And then on top of that, we also had Star Wars Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, which once again, I understand also on PC, technically plays better on PC, but still, we had it for the Xbox as well. So there were some really uh, fun games to play on there. And then of course, eventually, um, Microsoft uh, did get a hold of uh, Rare, so then there were a few decent games on the Xbox made by Rare, if I'm correct. I, I might be wrong, I, I, I think. The Xbox is truly a really good, decent video gaming console. I don't think it's better uh, compared to some of the other ones on this list, but it really was a very interesting console to be introduced into the con what will eventually become the big giant console wars. The Nintendo Switch. I love and hate the Nintendo Switch. Um, I mean, I hate, I say hate, like, very sarcastically. I, I love, love this console. If it wasn't for the fact that, uh, I, I have actually a lot more nostalgic connection and, um, uh, whatever to, like, uh, you know, the future uh, the other consoles on this list I probably would have actually put the switch at number one but there are a few technical problems with the switch uh, and mainly the the first one being at least the one I got I know there were future uh, uh, versions of the console that have a better battery life but the one I have the battery life isn't necessarily that great when you're trying to play it portably um, and then on top of that the biggest issue I have with the Switch is um, uh, the Joy-Cons and the fact that it's very easy for them to get uh, uh, drifting uh, with the joysticks. But really, that's really the only issue I have. Maybe some internet and online issues as well. But I really love the Switch for how versatile it is. You can literally bring that thing anywhere. You can put it on your TV and then play it, you know, up to more of its potential with, you know, some pretty dang decent graphics. Or you can take it on the road with you and then you can, and still the graphics even on there are still pretty dang good. 
And now on top of that, I understand that with a lot of the ports that I brought over onto the Nintendo Switch, they're not necessarily graphically and even sometimes gameplay wise better compared to the ones like uh, on the like the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, or even on the PC. But I do think it's honestly quite incredible that you're able to go ahead and pick up some of these games that honestly sometimes have incredible detailed graphics or high or high intense uh, gameplay and you're able to play it on the Switch whether or not that's on you know just the uh, you know in the dock or on handheld mode. Games like Doom or The Witcher, uh, these games honestly look, I mean they honestly look better on other consoles don't get me wrong but it's actually quite impressive for how they do look on the Switch. Then on top on top of that, it just has so many other really great ports, and I think the other thing I love about it is the fact that it's introduced me to a lot of uh, older games that, you know, came out like in the early 2000s, or uh, heck, even in the early, uh, the late 90s. And I'm picking up some of these games, like uh, Neverwinter Nights, Baldur, uh, Baldur's Gate, um, and I understand that these games are also on other consoles, once again. But I think it's just really incredible and very interesting that these games are being brought over to the Switch and that you can play them on the Switch. And I have so much fun with it. Not to mention that there are some pretty dang good, incredible games on the Switch as well. I mean, the, the three that come to my mind, of course, are Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, and of course, Super Smash Bros. Three incredible games that are honestly worth the price of the Switch just on its own. And after that, just add on all the other games onto there, and, and you know, especially with like a lot of the ports and stuff like that. Then honestly, you have a really great time with the Switch. The PlayStation 2. Now, this is honestly a console that I probably had a, a lot of nostalgic value attached to. When it comes to consoles, I usually tend to go back between Sony and Nintendo. Those are really my two main guys. It's for a lot of reasons, and most of them are the video games. I honestly think that the original Xbox was actually graphically better than uh, the PlayStation 2 in many regards. Uh, but the PlayStation 2, I also truly believe, had a really great gaming library. I mean, you had the God of War series, you had Kingdom Hearts, bloody Kingdom Hearts, which is such an honestly incredible gaming series. I mean, granted it was just two on the, well, technically three on the PlayStation 2. And then not to mention you had Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, just so many other really great games. And then my personal favorite game to play on the PlayStation 2 was Champions of Norath and its sequel Champions Return to Arms. I absolutely loved these two, um, basically, uh... Uh, RPG dungeon crawlers. They were so much fun and I love just grabbing like all my friends together. Uh, we would go ahead and make a party of the um, you know the characters that we would make and then just basically go on an adventure and go hack and slash some orcs. It was such an incredible experience and like I said the console itself is also very good um, in many regards and yeah uh, and not to mention that the PlayStation 2 in general was one of the best-selling video game consoles of all time is also really something to really hold to the sentiment of the console. The Super Nintendo. Now, this is a console that I have a little bit of nostalgia attachment to, and one of the reasons is I'm pretty sure if my memory is correct, this is actually the first video game console I ever, ever played. And uh, I'm pretty sure it was a mixture between my cousins and my oldest brother um, that I actually played uh, these particular consoles. I loved so many of the games I used to play on there, and, and I'm pretty sure the very first video game I ever played was actually Super Mario World. That game in particular just really blew me away with the adventure, just the stuff that you could do in the game. Eventually I got into a whole bunch of other Super Nintendo games. One of them was Killer Instinct. I absolutely loved Killer Instinct. I just love this console. I really love the games on it. The graphics were mind-blowing to me in so many regards. And I just absolutely love the fact that these games were just so integral to introducing me into the world of video games. The next two, honestly, this was probably the hardest top 10 for me to do 
uh, particularly for the last two that I have ever done with a top 10 list. And a lot of it has to do with the fact with um, its gaming library and nostalgic value to me. And although one console is definitely better than the other in some regards, this is definitely going to be a really hard one, but you guys will be able to see. The Nintendo 64. If you kind of caught on to my uh, last uh, thing that I just said, you'll probably be able to guess what number one is. But um, the thing is, the Nintendo 64 was probably the console that I, when I was younger, I put the most hours into. Uh, playing games like The Legend of Zelda, uh, Super Mario 64, uh, Shadows of the Empire, uh, Star Wars Racer, 007 GoldenEye, and then my personal favorite video game of all time, Banjo and Kazooie. I loved this game so much as a kid. And there are still other games on this console that I absolutely love as well. Uh, you know, Star Fox, uh, the Rogue Squadron games, Star Wars Battle for Naboo, you know, just so many incredibly great games for this console. The graphics were incredible. Um, this honestly was the console that really revolutionized 3D gaming on so many levels uh, with you know, being able to control the camera, just being able to go ahead and do like so many other things. Just as usual, Nintendo usually led the way when it came to video game consoles. Not necessarily with power, although with the Nintendo 64 it did have a lot of graphical power over some of its adversaries. It really led the way when it came to 3D gaming overall. And then on top of that, the Nintendo 64 just had so many incredible adventures, many incredible stories, incredible games, incredible experiences overall. And that is something that, honestly, the Nintendo 64 really holds close to my heart when it comes to a lot of, um, well, video games today. And it's something that really cannot be topped until this console. The PlayStation 1. I, this will probably be a little bit controversial over which one people think is probably the better one. And do you know what? If you pick up the Nintendo 64, I don't blame you. The Nintendo 64 is honestly a really dang good console. And like I said, this was the hardest one for me. The only reason why the PlayStation 1 wins for me is because a little bit has to do with a nostalgic value and honestly just an incredible gaming library and i understand that some of the games on the Nintendo 64 are probably better than this uh, than some of the games on here but you can't really deny some of the incredible games that the playstation one really brought forward i mean you got crash bandicoot spyro the dragon resident evil Dino Crisis, a Silent Hill. I know some of these are really, you know, games for like older audiences, but still, they are really great games that really revolutionized the gaming industry overall on so many levels. And then on top of that, I even have quite a few nostalgic gems attached to uh, the PlayStation 1. There's Toy Story 2, Star Wars Jedi Power Battles, Star Wars The Phantom Menace, particularly with Dino Crisis. This is probably the very first horror video game I ever watched my brothers play and then eventually I got into. And I just remember so many great memories of just sitting there on the futon with my oldest brother Jason as he was playing he would have the lights off as we would go ahead and watch uh, as i would go ahead and watch and then whenever like a scary moment came up he would go ahead and, and uh, me basically go rawr, rawr, you know as like the giant dinosaur like jumped through the window or something and then i would just get scared but i loved loved watching him play and then eventually i just got so incredibly invested in the playstation i think the playstation for me one of the reasons why i loved it a little bit over the nintendo 64 this was in a manner of speaking the video game console that got me into games for older audiences not to say that there weren't games on the Nintendo 64 that were not for older audiences. There were a few, including Resident Evil 2. But there was a something interesting about playing the PlayStation 1 and then getting into some of the games on there. Uh, uh, Tekken 3 for me, that was one. And then eventually, like I said, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, um, and uh, honestly, just so many others. And it... it 
this was really a console that, like I said, this one is more so nostalgic value over um, a lot of things. Uh, it's still a really good console, and it was also another really great implement into the aspect of 3D gaming along with the PlayStation. Uh, not the PlayStation, sorry, the Nintendo 64. Um, Nintendo 64 perfected a lot of the aspects of 3D gaming, but the PlayStation 1 really did get a lot of things right. And on top of that, it also just, once again, had so many incredible games I just loved to play. And... This is probably the console that I also put in like so many hours and eventually just got really highly invested into. I understand that the graphics are not necessarily that great, uh, if they're good at all, but I really do have like this weird love and affection for the graphics on the PlayStation 1. The PlayStation 1 will always be my favorite video gaming console of all time, purely for its gaming library and a lot of the memories that I was able to make with my family. That's my list of my top 10 favorite video game consoles. Now, the thing is, is that with, with the a lot of the games on the, uh, consoles on this list, I do kind of like go a little bit back and forth uh, to a certain degree, but this is a pretty stable list of like, you know, what truly is my favorite video gaming console of like all time and whatnot, you know, as we go further and further down the list. And I am very interested on what you would have to say are your favorite video, video game consoles of all time. I understand I didn't include a few on here, and I actually do own a few of these consoles. I, I didn't put the Xbox 360 on there, or the PlayStation 3, the Sega Dreamcast, and I do own these consoles, and... Uh, Let's take a Dream, uh, Genesis, not the Dreamcast. I'm sorry, I put the Dreamcast on there. But I I do really like these consoles, and I you know I play a lot of them. Um, now I you know I give a lot of time into these consoles with a lot of the games I own and stuff. But they just don't. They never really hit me in comparison to the consoles that I listed, and it's for a lot of reasons. I mean, even the PlayStation Three, which was another really good console for me it just never really hit me compared to the playstation 2 ps1 ps4 or or just like any of the other consoles i have on here these are not bad consoles that i left off or anything like that they're still genuinely good consoles on their own but i just for one reason or another i just didn't really get that that invested into them but if you did I'm very glad that you did because in general they're very good consoles. But anyway, make sure to leave um, basically your own personal favorite console list in the comment section below. I'm very interested and would love to hear your guys' feedback on what I had to say and I would love to hear like your own personal uh, gaming list as well or console list in, as well. But anyways, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that way you guys are notified when uh, future videos do come out. And then make sure that you like the video, uh, follow us on social media with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And then last but not least, if you guys can, I would greatly appreciate it if you could take a look into our Patreon, which is in the uh, comment, not the comment, is which is in the description below. Um, if you guys can take a look into it, there's a lot of really cool uh, behind the scenes stuff and um, you know, some uh, personal vlogs on my life and um, uh, uh, voting privileges and sometimes and if you're uh, able to get into the $20 tier you can even uh, literally just go ahead and tell me whatever movie or video game or um, a topic uh, video that you want me to do and I will go ahead and do it within reason of course but still that's the power that you have if you get into that uh, twenty dollar tier. But I think there's only two um, uh, positions left in there, so hey, make sure you take advantage of that if you guys can. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. This has been Shenetigans, and you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.